Hey, Salaam Alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Good evening, everybody. Finishing up my work week. And uh, start my little trouble. <laughs> I want somebody... Uh, to see somebody for people to jump on here. I don't see anybody on here. What's up, hey Linda? How you feeling? I want every I want I want some answers. I got some questions. Can anybody help me? <laughs> somebody somebody tag AJ Hughes and tell him get on here. <laughs> hey, tell tell AJ Hughes to get Fan and Rucker on here and, and uh and, uh, and 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 conversate with this with this promised young black hopeful. <laughs> Somebody tag AJ Hughes and tell him get here. <laughs> What's going on, Olivia? How you doing, sister? Them cookies look good the other day that you put up too. Things look real good. That's a good idea. Yeah, I wanna. Uh, I got some. Uh, I have some, uh, I got some issues to raise, and I want to know, uh, I, I, I really want to know why we got a die-hard loyalty to the government, one, first and foremost, but within the government, the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party has become a religion now, <laughs> it got to the point where you can't even question, you know, whoever the Democratic nominee for president is has become like a prophet. Hell, I didn't say worse things about Christianity and ain't nobody came at me as hard as they have about uh, O'Biden. <laughs> so, uh, I want to know what's happening. And these are all my friends that jumped on here right now. So I, don't, I want somebody, anybody but a dead body. And I keep getting the same over and over and over and over, I keep getting the same answers, and it's the same stuff, uh, the same reverberations they're trying to put out there on MSNBC. Fonte Williams, where that dead man? What's happening, man? I'll see you in a minute, man. How you a big cub doing, man? But uh, yeah, so. One of my issues is uh, nobody ever responded. You know, I get a lot of people, you know, who, who, who troll a lot of my posts. I, I don't think they mean bad. They just don't know no better. You know, I don't think they know no. They don't think they know no good, man. They, uh, you know, they jump on the post mad because they see me challenging the status quo. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, one major issue. As y'all know, I'm a former criminal, uh, and you know I, I feel like I was sucked into, swept into, I was manipulated, you know, by by a life. I mean, obviously I was, I was an adolescent. You know, I, I grew up learning certain things because I lived in certain environments, and I didn't build them environments. I, I ain't build West Terrace. I ain't build Abigail. I ain't build Westwood. I ain't build Mount Healthy. I ain't build them places. So, and knowing that I, me and none of my guys had no boats to go get no drugs or no or no airplanes to bring no guns in. So I want to know why it was such a coinky dink up under the nose of the Democratic Party. They the ones that's responsible for us. They're responsible for the black people. So if y'all don't know, I think 55, 60 percent uh, of black of all black people vote, and of that 55 or 60 percent, 90 percent of us them vote Democratic. This is why I'm always so hard on the Democratic Party, and, and I'm not a Trump supporter. Don't even play with yourself like that. I ain't, I ain't a none of them supporter. 
point blank period. Hell, Fonte Williams can run. He'll get my vote. <laughs> Fonte Williams and uh and uh and uh and Olivia as the uh, replace uh Karma Sutra Harris. <laughs> they, that's, they get my vote. <laughs> no, nobody else get my vote. But uh, my problem is seems to seems to me and I spend an endless amount of time researching this. My wife, y'all ask my wife, she'll tell you. I, I don't, I lose sleep researching, reading and stuff. I lose sleep trying to figure this thing out. Everybody who be arguing with me, they seem to have it figured out, but they ain't sharing the secrets. <laughs> I need them secrets, but what it seems like to me, it seems like the government, your government, created poverty. And once they created poverty, they said, okay, you know, we're going to throw dope in there. We're going to throw guns in there, which is, uh, you know, a booby trap in order to set us back. Why? Why do they have to do this? Why would good old America do this? Why would the place we pledge allegiance to every single morning in, in, in school, why, do, why would they do this? Why would good old Joe Biden and his people do this? For money. Because it make them rich. That's why everybody do everything, right? So, the easiest way to get rich is to kill off your competition, right? Or to sabotage your competition. Cheat in the game. So the economy is a game. Like they teach you in school. I went to business school business college for a little bit before I caught a case uh, and I, one thing I learned uh, in business school is they, they have this concept of who has the better mousetrap so uh, basically uh, they, they want to uh, uh, impress upon entrepreneurs incentives you know that's what Bit, that's what uh, entrepreneur. That's what drives entrepreneurship is incentive. Uh, you know, come up, find a problem, come up with a solution, and monetize the solution. That's business. So, uh, if if you got a game out here, which is the economy that's being played, and you know you happen to sabotage your competition then you're going to get to the riches before everybody else do. And by the time you got so many riches, you can look back and be like, oh, okay, like they tell us to do. Like a few of them, a few of those uh, individuals that was jumping on my posts and was hurting my feelings, <laughs> they, they, uh, they was like, oh, you need, you need to work hard. Well, I make this amount of money and I'm not having a hard time. So why should you? That's what they say. So after I done got all the money, which I'm coming to a knockout point, I'm talking about a knockout point. I just learned this today. I was actually researching while I was working. I cut eight acres today and still was able to learn something new. So, uh, you know, we got people who ain't even doing half that much, you know, challenging individuals that, you know, have given their life to this kind of stuff. But if I sabotage the game and you know, I put semen in your secrets. They shoot the gun. We take off running. When we take off running, I don't have semen in my secrets so I can run faster than you. So when I get to the finish line, I turn around and tell you, oh, you had semen in your secrets, but you should have ran harder. You should have ran faster. That's what they sound like. That's what those people sound like. When they say that they didn't have it hard and, and they say that, uh, you know, they're doing okay. They're doing all right. I live in Westchester, so I don't know what your problem is, brother. I don't know why you can't figure it out. Something wrong with you. <laughs> I told what brother, I was like, you know, you know, at my best, I brought in, you know, uh, on a regular 10 grand a month. And that's, and that's, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. <laughs> that ain't much as far as running a business, and especially the type of business that I run. Now, I don't average that. I'm saying I caught a nice run when I was bringing in about that much uh, twice. And, you know, start from zero, you know, humbly luck. 
you know, I'm just, man, I'm satisfied. I don't need, I don't, I'm not trying to be Donald Trump. I'm just trying to take care of me and my family. Yeah. But, you know, I told her, I confided in the brother and told him that, you know, he, he said, oh, my, my kid make that much money. I was like, well, damn. <laughs> but won't you and your kid teach us, teach me and teach us how to get that Westchester money, man? Instead of arguing and fussing and fighting with me, teach me how to get some of that Westchester money, man. <laughs> teach us, set up an institution, set up a college, teach us how to get that Westchester money. I highly doubt that that's the truth, but, uh, I said that all, I said all that to say, I just learned today that uh, whites, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it, we pass sugarcoating, hell, if it, if it hurts your feelings, well, I'm sorry, I apologize in advance, but white people, uh, the ones who were uh, uh, slave, or slave owners, made about 50 trillion dollars off of slavery over a course of 300 plus years 50 trillion dollars you want me to play catch up you want me to strap my boots up and work harder that what you want that that that's what that's what you want you you want me to you want me to catch up so I said uh, I said that to say I'm a, I, I try to be a decent individual. I work hard. Um, I know a lot of hard work people. My mama been working hard for man almost 40 years. I think been working since she was like almost almost 40 years. She's been working her finger, her her her, her, her the bone through the fingers, man. All my family, all my uncles, everybody, they all work hard. It was hard. Matter of fact, my my uncle, uh, uh, Linda Wilson, husband. Anybody that know Uncle Roy will tell you. And I talk about this all the time. This is the first time I bring it up publicly. He can tear down a house and build the house back up for you, all in a day. In one day. In one day. <laughs> That's it. Get him a brew. <laughs> That's all he need. <laughs> Get him a brew. He'll get you together. He tear that house down and build it back up for you that day. It's amazing to me, you know, how talented that man is. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how talented my other uncles are. That's why I get my contracting talents from. I have to. I mean, I've seen it growing up. But, you know, it's in my blood. They are, all, my, all my uncles told me it's in my blood. But one issue that I've run into and another issue that, you know, they ran into they ain't received no help or no funding. No help whatsoever. And started this, they born and raised in Wanda Hills and Everson. They come from they come from the gutter. Never had any help whatsoever. And they do well, they do alright, you know, they don't live in the hood no more. They work themselves out. They work their ways out, you know, and they, they got jobs and they were they able to stay out of the drug trade or whatever, but now they're a little older. It's time for them to retire. They all contractors. How do they retire? There was no help, none whatsoever. Said that to say, and I use me and mine for example, so that don't nobody feel like I'm pointing the finger at nobody. Uh, uh, I just learned another statistic the other day. There's like 380 something million acres of uh, farmland in America, and only 1.4% of all the farm owners in America are black. Said that to say, the government had been since day one, but just last year, uh, I think this is one of the main initiatives of Obama, gave out like last year, they gave out $33 billion in government subsidies for farms. They got help. They getting help. They got folks in the government that represent their interests. They see a problem. I'm not saying that help is wrong. That help is good. It's smart. It's an it's, it's, it's investment in the economy. It takes money to make money. For anybody that really don't understand economics, 
I'ma put it in street terms. What's up, LaDon? I'ma put it in street terms. When I was, uh, and I'ma get back on my point. Uh, when I was in the streets, man, I was the hardest working y'all can imagine. Y'all see how hard I work now? Uh, I was the hardest working dope boy they probably ever was. One of, one of, one of them anyway. Anybody know me? I'll tell you, I just stand outside with a gram of dope for three days. So that one gram is gone. Yeah, back then you can make a hundred dollars off a gram of dope. You buy it for thirty dollars and you make a hundred dollars. I stand outside all day for for seventy dollars. And once I got my little name out there, and they and that's how they start calling me red because I used to always wear red. And yeah, back then we ain't never want to tell the dope fiends our name, but we ain't want them to tell on us. Bro, I ain't never tell them what my name was. First they called me youngster. Hey, hey youngster, hey, youngster, Charlie, come here, come here, Charlie. Then I start being a regular, they start calling me red. Hey, red, 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 red. Because that's all I wore was red. So, said all that to say, I ain't have enough dope sometimes. So I had to holler at my big homie. I ain't going to say his name. Because he, uh, he, uh, <laughs> you know, he's still active. I had to holler at one of my big homies. And what he had to do, he had to invest into my economy, into the economy. <laughs> In front of me a couple more grams. And a few times we fell out because I was like, bro, I told you, put that to the side. I'm coming to get it. He's like, man, I'm not waiting on no money. I'm like, all right, bet. So, you know, I, so he, so he gave me three grams. I was like, here, this will hold you off. And mind you, I'm piecing these grams out. It's from the street guys. I'm piecing these grams out. You know what I'm saying? 10, 20, 10, 20, 5, 10, 20. So, you know, I, that, them three grams will keep me busy for a little while, right? End up, and you know, my demand rose. I needed to have more than three grams. So he seen me coming back. Then he started thinking, was like, you know what? What you cut, come, what you keep coming to me, that's making me money. And I see you about your money. I trust you. So I, I, I got a line of credit. <laughs> so he start, he start giving me quarter ounces of dope. And then it just kept growing, half ounce, and then it got to, a, uh, to a whole ounce. Then when I got to a whole house, that's why I had to get with Cleon. Uh, uh, hey, Linda. <laughs> that's, that's why I had to get with Cleon. Cleon showed me how to, you know, showed me how to twerk it. <laughs> but, but I said that to say, uh, uh, that's how you make money. It takes money to make money. If somebody has the natural resources or the whereabout, which the cocaine was the natural resource, somebody had it. They had to give credit, you know, to the entrepreneur for that person to go out and generate money and then create a circle, uh, a flow of money. So when he, you know, he seen that it was in his best interest to, you know, give me more dope than I can handle, keep me busy, that, that kept me indebted to him. He was like a bank. Them guys was like banks. They kept me indebted to them. I come back, I spend my money with them. He go and spend his money with his connect, his blood, his connect, his blood, go back. You know, y'all know how it go. So it takes investment. Going back to uh going back to my point. My uncles and I, you know, we all contractors. I haven't seen any comprehensive plans. Now I've heard them say it. And they've been saying it. Y'all might be new to politics. I've been studying politics for the last 15 years. And in the last 15 years, and you can add my life, I've, I've only seen naked promises from your boy too. Mainly from your boy, Obama. He gave us a whole bunch. When he was campaigning, he gave us a whole bunch of naked promises. A whole bunch of them. Never did none of the stuff that he said. Well, he, well, he didn't say much about what he was going to do. But... You know, when they said bring it down incarceration and uh, bring in black jobs to the community, they use these broad terms to get us all in our emotions and then we run out there to the vote. But even though, you know, the support of the vote really ain't add up, but, you know, they send you over here to the vote, but the voting, the real voting is over here. With the electoral college is that way and they sent us the other way. They don't want you to find out about the electoral college. Sidebar that, I was talking to my mama and her friend, her, her best friend, one of her best friends last night. This man's 60 years old and didn't understand how the electoral college worked. 
I came home from work yesterday. He was like, yeah, man, so, you know, did you vote? I said, yeah, like, you better, you better tell him gone, ma. <laughs> like, you better tell him gone. I said, what? What you talking about? I was like, I was like hell no, I ain't vote. I was like, mom, excuse my name. I said, like, hell no, I ain't vote. And I turned into a two-hour conversation why I didn't vote. 60 years old. 60 years old. He made. He got money. He cool. He got a, he got a, a you know, he retired. He got money. He cool. Didn't understand how this voting process worked. And can't understand. I asked him, I said, did you know Donald Trump lost the popular vote? Lost the election? That last time he ran, when we got behind Hillary Clinton, he was like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I heard something about that. I said, yeah, well, you know how many votes he lost by? He didn't have a clue. He was like, what, one or two or three or few or what? And weren't they supposed to go to court about that? I said, no, nah, it wasn't illegal. He looked at me like that. And he lost the popular vote by three million votes. Three million. Not 300, not 3,000. Not 30,000, not 300,000, 3 million. 3 million. So, yeah, voting is the 52 fake out. It's a whole process. He didn't even know. When, he, when I told him about the electorates and the electoral college, he was like, all right, well, you got a point there, youngster. Well, 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 well where did we find this electoral college? I was like, your guess is good as bad. I've been digging into that for a long time. The only thing that I ever could find was that the the House and I think the President and the, the Speaker of the House, they choose the Electoral College, all 538 members. So how's, how's, how are we got, how does the people got any say in any of this process? But that ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. So going back, um, if so number one remember white folks went up on the scoreboard 50 trillion dollars and during uh slavery times we can't boot we can't strap our boots up you will never catch up you will never ever 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 catch up so when they did release us from slavery they still, you know, they did all the other layers of, uh, of other stuff. They had the lynching periods when they released us. Then they had the Jim Crow periods. Now they got the uh, uh, the incarceration and the and the, uh, and the economic and, and economic debt slavery. Now, which brings me to another point of mine. Some more of my little fun numbers. The average, and this is average. I'm not speaking to you, rich Negroes. And if you rich, you rich and grows so rich, and y'all need to help y'all fellow brother and y'all fellow sister. That's the, the vast majority of us, vast majority of us, only twenty percent of us make more than a hundred thousand dollars. That ain't gonna get it done, partner. That ain't gonna get it done. The vast majority of us fit into the category of only making about forty thousand dollars a year. So let's talk about how much it costs to live in America. That cost about $55,000 a year. So we are already $15,000 in debt according to the average cost of living in America. On top of that, the average black American carries $30,000 in debt. So now you're $45,000 behind. How are you going to get out of that? And you only make forty, on average $40,000 in a year. Some ain't adding up. Some is not adding up. This is what my problem is. I don't be trying to be combative and I don't be trying to be the know-it-all and all the stuff that people done said about me. I'm not trying to be all of that. I have a real life problem. If I had $100,000 invested into me, I could have the Yard Barber LLC all across Ohio and maybe cross state, cross country, whatever. If we had a leg up, if we had some investment, maybe it would be Williams Construction instead of Trump Construction. My uncles can my uncles can build this country. Just my uncles can build this country. I got an uncle that they fly around this country and come get his expertise on on on, on commercial factory buildings before they even break the ground on it. A black man. He was one of the first black men to graduate 
in finance from Xavier University. That's my uncle, my flesh and blood. I look just like him too. My flesh and blood. What do you, what do you, what do you think it would have happened if he got a government subsidy or if he would have got what the government owes him in reparations? He didn't ask to be born in a... Uh, uh, they didn't ask to be born in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the Alabama and Jim Crow South and then had to be heard at my granny. You should hear the stories of it, the horror stories that my granny can tell you about how they got run out of, run out of, uh, Alabama and had to come to Cincinnati with nothing. And then Cincinnati had a whole trick for them, had a whole trick up your sleeve. You should hear the horror stories that my grandmother had to tell, has to tell about how, how uh, 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 her being a young black woman with children in the 50s and the 60s. A young black woman. Wasn't no, wasn't no Section 8 or none of that back then or none of that. Wasn't none of that stuff back then for black folks. We was barely getting it. Imagine, imagine how hard that is. Coming to nothing. He didn't ask the people in the Wanda Hill. They didn't ask for that. Negroes on here talking about, oh, you should have worked harder. Man, they didn't ask for that. They didn't, didn't nobody ask for a uh, Bull Connor. My, my, my granny can tell you personal stories about the rule of Bull Connor. She grew up under him. Don't know, don't none of y'all know who Bull Connor is. That's who was hitting Martin Luther King in the head with them rocks. That's who was involved in the assassination of Martin Luther King. And guess what? Dun, 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 dun. He was a Democrat. I, I, I know, I know, I, I know, I know. Sorry, I'm sorry. Calm down. They said sorry, so we should forgive them. <laughs> they sorry. <laughs> and it's not the same people. No, it's not the same people. But it's the same policies. It's the same exact policies. And all of my little numbers that I be putting up, all my little statistics and everything that I be putting up is evidence for what my claims are. An even worse statistic about how we've been, uh, and I'm going to close that point. So if we were, if we were invested in this country, if we had true political uh, representation, true political representation in the government, they could balance the scale. Once the scale gets balanced and black folks are given what they are owed as far as reparations and we don't but we about to talk about that and and they say this is a hypothetical number but they got some lawyers that had run a study that's about if america was to pay the reparations it would be something like something like something like 13 14 trillion dollars that they owe us which means that all 40 million black people in this country well not all 40 million but all of the black adults in this country would be able to receive a $300,000 check in the mail, just like your stimulus. So, and I was getting made fun of, and they was like, oh, the Nancy Pelosi got you a $1,200 stimulus. Now, I want my $300,000 stimulus. No, I want my $300,000 stimulus. I want no $1,200. Dang, that, I, that's why I would go back, take y'all back. I gotta get you, I gotta get you milk before I give you some steak. Take y'all back a couple more weeks, a couple weeks back, when I told you we didn't got complacent with eating the scraps off the table. And I told you, I don't want, I don't even want to be in your house, slave owner. I don't even want to be in your house, let alone see your table, let alone see some of the scraps that come off your table. I want my own house, my own table, my own chicken. And I'm gonna cut them scraps off and throw them in the trash where they belong, and I'm gonna eat the good part of the chicken. One of twelve hundred dollars. You ain't my candidate if you ain't talking to me about reparations for what they did to black people. And every man, this is the and this is the this uh, the this the dispelling of the the age old argument that the conservatives put out there, the Republican and Democratic conservatives pay out, come out out there. They say, oh well, why should I pay for what somebody else did 300 years ago? Or black people always guilt trip each other nowadays and say oh man that happened in the past brother you got to get over that man you just got to work hard i don't know many people who work harder than me the people who pay me don't work as hard as i do when i'm out there cutting all them people grass what i do to them people grass they cannot do that to their own grass on a weekly basis and i'm doing 15 
sometimes 20, at a, uh, 20, 20 properties a day. You don't talk to me about working no harder. And I made this happen out of my own money, out of nothing. I had to go without a, without nothing. I mean, without anything to start this business. And I told y'all the story 50,000 million times. I had to use my own money to fund my own show. I had to go without. I had to starve. I had to stay down. I had to wear the same clothes. I even I could take y'all back three years when I put up a a, 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 a picture. And, and I asked everybody if they liked the clothes that I had on. They was like, yeah, you looking, you looking good, Hawk. You look like you're doing good since you done came on, boom, boom, boom. And I hit everybody at the end of the day, at the end of the post, and said, I bought all this at Walmart. I ain't buying no expensive clothes, blah, blah, blah. With the move, I'm getting ready to start me a business. I said that three years ago. I had to start, I had to put, I had to put in my own work. I had to. So don't tell me to work harder. Don't tell me to work harder. So at the same time that we got... You know, on one hand, we got the white conservatives saying, oh, I don't want to pay for what somebody else did. Statistic. Nine, and this come out of Harvard. 90% of the white people that live in this country today benefited from the slavery 300 years ago. Inherited the wealth. Somehow, some way. That does not mean that there's not poor white people in this country. Does not mean that. They're the ones you need to tell them, strap your boots up. Don't tell me strap my boots up. Tell them strap your boots up. They ain't got no excuse why they broke or why they poke. No one's ever. Somebody jacked the money off. We never had the money in order to jack it off in the first place. So, and then on the other hand, you got our own kind telling us that we need to work harder. Mathematically, that is impossible. There's a bunch of people that just jumped on here that ain't get it. Reiterate it. And the studies just come out to show that white people benefited about $50 trillion of wealth in the 300 plus years of slavery that they had. So, then, so they got fifty trillion. They got a fifty trillion dollar head start on us. And you telling me to work harder? We ain't even close. Some more fun facts for you: the average Black Americans' net wealth is eleven thousand dollars. That's not eleven thousand dollars cash in the bank. That's not that. It's not eleven thousand dollars cash in the bank. Eleven thousand dollars net worth. How much your car worth? How much your uh, how much your house is worth, and whatever else you got taken out in credit, minus your income. That's your net worth. Another fun fact: average net the average uh, 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 net value of, of your counterpart, white people, one hundred and forty thousand dollars. I got a problem with that. By the way, I'm in that. I'm in that category of the average black net wealth. I'm in that category. And I, I, I don't even have eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> so I, I'm pissed off. Yeah, I'm pissed off, Mr. O'Biden. I work very, very hard, and uh, you and your people been promising me and my people that y'all gonna take us to the promised land. But it seems like we've been work, walking in circles around the promised land because we've been free. Quote unquote, we only been free for 53 years. 56 years. 53 or 56 years, I forget the calculation. Whatever, 64 years, y'all tell me, y'all the smart ones. I'm not the smart one. I think that is 53. So we've only been free for 53 years and we ain't received nothing. My, uh, 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 another number I'm gonna hit y'all with. When they started taking statistics in 1967, when we were legally allowed to come into the con uh, to come into the economy, uh, uh, they started to take record our statistics. We did phenomenal. We amassed, on average, twenty nine thousand dollars a year. Look how resilient black people are. If you give us a leg up, you give us you give us you you, you give us a, you give us an egg, we're gonna make you a chicken. Out of zero, we we accumulated twenty nine thousand dollars on average of wealth a year. But sadly. We're in 2020, and I think the statistics that they took last was in 2019. The average, uh, uh, well, yeah, because 2020 ain't over, so all these numbers are from 19. The average uh, black medium income, what I already told y'all, was $41,000, and we started out with $29,000. 
Well, damn. That's only $11,000 over 53 years. That's crazy. So that's about, so every year since they gave us freedom with in 64, when they gave us freedom, they gave us, uh, as reparations, they gave us about $180 or $200 a year. That's what they gave. That's what they gave us. Imagine. If that, if that was a little too hard for them to break it down. In 67, they started recording the stats. Well, actually, it was 68 because the number was from 67. That's neither here nor there. The first record of uh, income that we got, that we had recorded, they said we averaged $29,000 a year. Fast forward 53 years, and we in the heyday, and we didn't have five, I think, five Democratic presidents, and we didn't have six Republican presidents. Either one way or the other, either way it go, like I've been telling you, they both been doing a horrible job, and they, they're fired. And my, uh, and my, and my, what, what's his name, voice, and Trump voice, you're fired. And black people have only progressed $180 a year. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense whatsoever. I got some more numbers, but I ain't trying to make this video that long. I got a long video coming that's gonna have a bunch of, that's gonna have a breakdown in it, but this, I wanted to bring a lot of, in this video, I wanted to bring a, a lot of my posts full circle. Uh, uh, so don't people don't just think I'm, uh, I'm trolling and I'm just throwing all this useless information out here just for fun. So, I'm going to close that up saying that. And I want anybody on here to tell me, with that being the reality, those are all, and I got all the receipts. Anybody don't believe me? Uh, uh, what's up, Ron? I got Ron on here. Hey, y'all, Ron saved my life, man. <laughs> Real talk. That's crazy. It's a funny story, man. When uh, you know, That was my partner. You know, we, we hoop and work out together. And when my wife tried to kill me, you know, he was the first person to respond to the scene, man. He made sure the people took care of me, man. He said they can call you a lot of things. Can't call you a dummy. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, for real. Facts, facts, brother. Facts, facts, facts. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anybody on here, y'all, uh, uh, y'all free to speak. Y'all come on here if y'all want to. <laughs> they, nobody want to come on here and, and, and sit on the hot seat, man. I just need to know. Why is it so hard for black folks? Everybody who I know, I know a lot of people who ain't criminals. Like uh, 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 my, my, my oldest daughter's mother, she has a great idea. And she started a business, it's called Elegant Bliss. And she doing like the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, like the tummy tucks or whatever, but it's not surgical. You know, it's like radiation or something like that. Y'all you know, need the information, I can get y'all the information. But you know, this, this, is, this is some leading technology or whatever. She got to start all this stuff out of her own pocket. She got to start all this out of her own pocket and do it all on her own. She, you know, she trying to make sure that she don't live in the hood, so she living in a nice, uh, a nice area. Uh, you know, what I'm saying we working together on raising our daughter. She living in a nice area. She got put all her time, all her effort. She work. You know, she take care of her kids. Uh, uh, she running her business, and she got a full time job. How are you supposed to do all that on your own? That's that's the that's the life of an average black black person. That's the, when the, when the, when are we supposed to have the chance to have some money to sit back and say, okay, I'm gonna take forty thousand dollars and put it into this idea, and then hopefully in the future it's gonna turn into McDonald's. Anybody ever just sit around and wonder why the hell is McDonald's white? Why is Wendy's white? Uh, why is Kentucky Fried Chicken white? And they stole it from black people. Same difference with uh, what's the other two Popeyes? Why are all these people rich off of what they do except for us? And I ain't trying to make everybody rich. I'm just tired of being poor. I'm tired of man. Hell, I'm invoice to invoice. I'm working hard. I'm trying to get to that. I'm strapping up my boots. I'm 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 getting to that point, man. But the I, I it, it, something's wrong, and y'all are smarter than me. And this and y'all, my rents that I go on on here is just. Me trying to figure out what the hell is going on. 
and, and it's, 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 that's my rehabilitation because you know I didn't came. I told y'all in the last visit in the last video I came to the conclusion when I was 18, 19 years old. Oh yeah, I ain't working for nine dollars an hour. Over with <laughs> to the junk, to the drugs and the guns I go, and I got a special place in my heart for them guys in the hood because I'm that guy. I'm just barely holding on with my teeth, and y'all forget. Y'all be happy for me or whatever. Alhamdulillah, y'all watch the story. Y'all see how I progress. Alhamdulillah. You know, uh, uh, y'all be real happy for me. But y'all forgot, I just came home from prison four years ago. It's hard. It's hard, hard. It's really hard, especially being a business owner. I don't have a guaranteed check coming. I don't. I don't have it. And, and when things slow up or whatever, I ain't got no big stack of money that I can sit back and lay back on. I don't own a house where everything is paid for and I just got to pay the property tax. I know guys that's in the game, that's in the industry, that then inherited that kind of wealth from their people. So they had the opportunity to open up a business. They don't have no mortgage. I don't either. I can't even get, I, man, they want to, I can't even get myself positioned to get a mortgage. I'm wondering why. And I'm doing it all just like how y'all said do it. That's what y'all said do, right? Don't rob people. Don't shoot people. Don't sell drugs. Don't womanize. That's what y'all said do. I'm doing that. And I'm trying to figure out why it ain't working. Hell, everybody that I know, they doing all of this stuff. They stand. They keeping their head straight. Everything the white man told them to do, they doing it. And it still ain't working out. So I said that to say, please. What are we voting for? I done came up with the idea that, you know, only we know what's best for us. And the only person or people that should be leading us who can logically make policies for us is us. Joe, uh, Joe O'Biden ain't, ain't us. He don't know black people. Kamala Harris is not us. She do those people were once enemies from black from, to black people. And and, and y'all can go ahead on with that old slave tied argument that they changed. Right? Where was y'all at when I was on trial? Hell, I changed as soon as they told me I was looking at 90 years. I changed then. She man, I changed right then and there. Where was y'all at to get me forgiveness? Like y'all asking old Biden and Kamala Harris. Yeah, they asking us to forgive them for what they done to black people. They actually done stuff to black people. They did war, crimes of war, crimes of, against humanity. One brother, I, I shared the video, then nobody looked at it. Nobody looked at it. I shared the doggone video of a, of a brother that came forward, and his his name, her, Kamala Harris's name, is all in his paperwork. She was the district attorney that saw through his conviction with no evidence, none. And then a lot of other cases, she purposely locked up, and these guys was black. She purposely locked these dudes up and withheld the evidence, the right evidence that would have exonerated them. That's, that's, that's on paper. That ain't no conspiracy. She got convicted of that. And y'all telling me to vote for her? That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. I'm, I, I ain't trying to be funny. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not heckling. You know, brother called me a heckler. I'm not heckling. If everything, if I'm tripping, y'all let me know everything I just said in this video. If I'm tripping, y'all let me know and I'll shut up and I'll take my poor ass on somewhere. I deactivate this Facebook account. But this is the only reason why I got Facebook outreach and, and movement for the people. I don't care about no likes or none. I don't get no sponsors off of none of it. it. It take time out my day. My time is money. I'm a contractor. My time is money. It take time out my day. I could be doing something else constructive with my brain right now on my little, on my little smartphone other than sitting here ranting, trying to give something to the struggle. If I'm tripping, if, it, if everybody else in this country, everybody else black in this country got it easy, y'all tell me. Let me know if I'm tripping. Cause I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't commit no crimes. I ain't doing none of that. I'm, I'm I strap my boots up. I'm doing it just like how y'all said do it. For anybody, please tell me what 
you know, what have the Democratic Party, these people who we religiously support, what the have they ever done for us? Obama included. And the only thing that Obama did that anybody can be proud of is 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 he pushed helped push through Obamacare. Dun 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 dun. Obama didn't write Obamacare. It was not his idea. It was a Jewish dude, a white Jewish dude. Go look that up. So Obama didn't do that. Somebody, I think his name was John Gruden or Gruden. Not that's the football player. It's something like that. John Gruden or Gruden. I got it in my phone. Look it up. Google who wrote, who created Obamacare. That's why they changed it from being Obamacare to the Affordable Care Act. All that did is expand the amount of people and qualify more people to be covered for health care. That wasn't for black people. We already was on Medicaid and Medicare. We already had it. We was already poor and we already qualified for the government to give us uh, 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 health care. So he didn't do nothing. He didn't do that for us. But he did swing his axe and make sure that gay rights was legislated. He did do that. And he stood and fought tooth and nail with them folks about that. He didn't do that with us. And a lot of money is owed to us. I'm telling you, the scholars are saying 13, 14 trillion dollars is owed to us. Now, y'all want me to shut up. If we can mobilize, if we can organize and mobilize, and 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 I believe if we get our stuff together. We can file this suit against the government to pay our reparations and get a three hundred thousand dollar check or something like it in the mail. Now, how y'all like Aki stemming this plan, huh? <laughs> how y'all talking about? Well, well, what are you doing? What are you doing for the struggle? They, they're running. I'm doing the same thing. They, they, I'm, I'm promising y'all something. And as a matter of fact, Google this. There's a brother named who, who, who I'm a student of. His name is um, uh, 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 Claude Anderson, Dr. Claude Anderson. He, by himself, along with the organization that he associates himself with, I actually think he owns it, uh, they, they actually filed a lawsuit for reparations and they succeeded. He succeeded, but they beat him on the technicality. He got videos and he got books and all this broken down broken down so as far as I can see they willing and ready to cut the check they just ain't got nobody to cut the check to and like a cop told me a long time ago if you don't care about your community why should we why should we they don't have nobody to cut the check to black folks ain't asking O Biden and Harris for their reparations Life is so hard for the everyday black man because of slavery. And slavery went on for 500 years. Chattel slavery was 300 plus, and then we had 200 years of struggling just to be recognized of a, as a human being. That whole entire time, they was running up the check. They was running up the check. It's gonna take more than uh, O'Biden to uh, 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 to get uh, uh, to to build a white power plant, a, a power plant owned by a white guy, to allow black guys to work in it. It's, it, it's going to take a lot more than that. And then on top of that, don't get me started with the wage discrimination. Don't don't get me started with them numbers. Y'all don't want them numbers. Y'all talking about go to work. Y'all talking about go to school and go to college. Oh, I'm gonna I'm give you one. I gotta give y'all one. I gotta get y'all one. I just read a statistic that showed that a white man with a felony conviction will get a call back from a job before a black man with no felony conviction. And this was a study that was done by Harvard. Harvard done that study. Come on now. It ain't fair out here. And maybe I don't got it all figured out, but I tell you one thing I do got figured out, I know something ain't right. And everything that I'm talking about is what I'm finding. As I get it, I get it. I'm letting it go as I get it. And hopefully, you know, this speaking out will 
bring, you know, the right people, the right human resources to. I ain't educated. Y'all educated. I was in the joint when y'all was in college. When y'all was working on y'all masters, I was, I was, I was, I was in the joint, doing hard time. I, I won't be the guy to do it, but I can. I got a voice. I can speak out. I can speak up. I can speak out and speak up against the injustice. I don't have to sit there and take it. I'm not gonna sit here and take it. I was just sitting laughing with my OG. It was like, man, when we was little, didn't you think by the time you was 36, 35, you know, we'd be free? You know, we'd have a family. You know, we our kids would be, you know, well off. we own some property. we have a career of some sort. The vast majority of black people don't have that life. They don't have that life. And that's what I'm speaking towards. And that's what I'm speaking for. I ain't trying to be no politician. I told you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gangster. I ain't, I ain't got it in me. I, it'd be one debate. Y'all be, oh, the brother that messed up. Man, we was going to support you every day. I'm out here fighting in the parking lot after the debate. I'm punching no Biden. I'm, I'm stealing on him. I ain't trying to hear nothing. Because I know what type of snake he is, man. I ain't going for it. I'm punching him. <laughs> I'm not the politician. But I am but I am somebody that's going to step up and that's going to say something. And Prophet Muhammad said, like, so he said, if you can't change something wrong, change it with your hand. If you can't change it with your hand, change it with your, uh, with your tongue. If you can't change it with your tongue, then change it with your heart. The matter or uh, whatever the thing is. So I definitely can't do nothing with my hand, not yet. So I'm doing something with my tongue. That's what the Prophet Muhammad told me to do. This is something that, this is injustice that's going on around the world. Mind you, we ain't the only people that they did this to, but every other people's Pakistan, Afghanistan, all the stands that y'all know about, Iraq, all the war places that y'all talking about. There was people like me that stood up and was like, man, we do with y'all. Go learn about Winston Churchill and they conquer, they conquer, they conquest around the world. Go learn about that stuff, y'all. Go learn about that stuff. Y'all think Pakistan was always here? Pakistan didn't get recognition, I don't think, until like the 70s. And America was helping India uh, 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 suppress these people, these oppressed people who wanted to be free. If y'all didn't know, Pakistan and India is the same land. It's the same exact thing, the same exact land. Now, Muhammad Jinnah, now he's celebrated as a hero. But at that time, he was a terrorist. He was a house nigga, like y'all called me. Uh, he was confused. He was lost. All the stuff y'all say about me, that's what they said about Muhammad Jinnah. Now that he didn't establish freedom for his nation, now that we recognize, we call it Pakistan. And Pakistan, it only means the land of the pure. That's what it means. They felt like the Hindus was on some mess. We were like, we don't want to live. They, they were like, we don't want to live like that. We're going to make, we're going to move over here where we live at. We ain't going to bother y'all. Leave us alone. We live right here. This is us right here. That's why they called it Pakistan. It's the land of the pure. I just want a pure land. I want my kids to go to school and not have to worry about being shot. I want my kids to go to college or maybe not go to college or to enter the workforce and not be discriminated against. I want to enter the workforce and not be discriminated against. Even as a business owner, I get discriminated against. I was telling y'all about how the folks out in Indian Hills was, was saying was calling my contractor and asking him if he had hired the work crew, the, the workhouse, because my original colors was orange and blue. My concept, I mean, orange and black. My concept was the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm like, I'm a Cincinnati company. You know, everybody in Cincinnati loves the Cincinnati Bengals. Orange stands out. When I'm in the grass and when I'm in people's neighborhoods, I was like, I want, I want to stand out. I want people to look over and say, who are these guys? When they look over, they see on our shirts, the yard barber. I used to tell my guys that. Mind you, this is another thing I did. I created a black business and I gave, I created black jobs for black people, for felons. Y'all can sue me if y'all want. I discriminately hired felons. So my idea was that. But when I left, they called my contractor and be like, hey man, you know, a couple of prisoners just left from cutting my grass. What's going on? I deal with discrimination. That's why, that's why I changed the colors to white and green. Two colors that I know this country love. <laughs> they love white and they love green. <laughs> That's the story behind that. And my guys as close to me, they know. But, uh, yeah, so anybody but a dead body, 
tell me why you support the Democrats. Please tell me why. Anybody. Y'all can come when I hang this up. Y'all can come in, inbox me, call me. My guy Adrian, he calls me. Y'all seen us lock horns. He on here. We y'all see us lock horns, but he called me. You know, we talked about it. But I know him, so you know, that's a little different. But you know, that, don't none of y'all strangers be calling me. <laughs> don't none of y'all strangers be calling me in the middle of the night. Of the night. <laughs> You'd be in trouble. <laughs> but we can talk about it. I want to talk about it. But my idea is that. We can't trust them. We've been trusting them. And uh, we just need to fire them. So they're not doing a good job. Obviously, they're not doing a good job. And we need to hire us. We got individual hell. All the way down to brothers like Ron Brace, fireman. You know? In fact, say I get my say we had our own city, we had our own everything. He'll be the head of the fire department. Y'all, y'all, and y'all gave Abdul Kabir the check. Y'all gave Ak the check. I'ma call my people. I'ma make my cabinet. I'ma call my people. I'ma call who I know can, can do the profession. He can run the fire. He can run the firehouse. We got professionals. We got black professionals. I know business. I know a lot of other guys know business. Everybody know black people build everything in this country. And we ain't got to worry about that. We have everything that we need. We, I forget how much it is that we generate uh, 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 on, a, on a yearly basis. I think black people generate about $11 billion a year. I think so. Somebody check me on that. Somebody check me on that. But we got the buying power of $1.4 trillion. $1.2 trillion. Trillion. We got what we need. We don't need them no more, y'all. Only thing that we should be talking about to them is where my money at. That's it. We can do every, we can do everything on our own. We I put the the sister Maxine Waters up, man. She supports reparation. We got folks. We got black folks, black politicians, black minded. And like I said, once we establish ourselves on the ground, they got to do what we tell them to do anyway. We can do that. We got all kinds of black entrepreneurs. We got all kinds of black visionaries. We got all kind. We got all kinds of everything, man. And I think we need to fund our own show. That's my plan. That's what I stand for. I ain't just on the sideline heckling. I ain't just on uh, uh, just on Facebook complaining. I'm giving milk first. Then I got some steak for you. And a lot of people got you know they ready to eat some steak. Y'all sit back and watch. Y'all sit back and watch. This ain't no heckling. I got a real live plan. And if anybody knows somebody, somebody else that was, you know, disagreeing with me, they said they know. They, they folks is in the city council. I said, I have a plan, and I got some brothers from the from the community that have a plan. We ready. Holla at me. Holla at me. I already got the chance to speak at City Hall one time. They never called me back. <laughs> they never called me back. Why you think they didn't call me back, man? They had everybody that they needed in that room, in that room. And before they had me speak, I spoke in front of the mayor. I spoke in front of uh, the, the, the police chief. I spoke in front of uh, 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 the district attorney and a few other big hats. They gave my backwards behind an opportunity to be heard on behalf of the community. And beforehand, they told me, they said, hey, listen, this ain't Facebook Live, man. You know, this is that person. This, they showed me who was in the room. I looked, it's like, all right. Well, <laughs> then, then, it, then it needs to be Facebook Live because they need to hear this. Somebody somewhere playing some games. And I'm tired of the games being played with me. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. I'm ready for things to be the way that it's supposed to be. Or at least moving in that right direction. And 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 I, I, I don't see a hell. Uh, Obama, uh, O'Biden, excuse me, and Kamala Harris ain't doing or saying nothing other than what any other candidate who ain't done nothing in the past 53 years. They ain't doing nothing different. Giving us a bunch of broken promises. We're going to bring jobs to the black community. We're going to get incarceration rates down. So I'm supposed to sit around for no help. Uh, 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 Hillary Clinton said that. She, she don't need to be the president in order for her to do that. We ain't heard a peep from Hillary Clinton since she lost that election. 
she was all about the black cause and the black cause was all about her even though she tried to murder Obama even though she tried to murder Obama we black people we so forgiven she tried to assassinate our black messiah Jesus was coming back when Obama was looking like he was going to win the presidency and the same woman who tried to murder this man we forgave her and then we got behind her and her and her empire of money her and her husband have enough money Barack Obama and Michelle Obama they worth 80 million dollars he just got paid four hundred thousand dollars for a speech somewhere in New York four hundred thousand dollars and in that speech that they paid him four hundred thousand dollars for Google this four hundred thousand dollars they paid that man for that speech and he ain't say nothing about reparations for black folks and y'all still supporting him y'all still supporting the smooth operator no 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 that ain't how it worked Y'all should have never, I'm sorry, I apologize if I hurt y'all feelings, but y'all should have never let a street dude have a camera phone. I apologize, man. But that ain't how it work. I mean, them street, uni them street principles is universal. You don't run off with my money. I mean, we kill you for that. He ran off with our money, man. Ran off with our money. He just, he was going around all around the world, all around the country. Speaking on issues, these folks didn't succeed. He didn't succeed in, you know, in getting these folks to 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 believe him. They believe in Obama. They love Obama. They love him. Why in the world has he done nothing? And just like I told y'all before, nobody touched the post. Michelle, y'all love King Von and y'all love Dirk, Lil Dirk. Y'all love them guys. I don't know the other rappers from there. Y'all love them guys. I just gave them a chance last week. I don't fool with the young rappers that much. Michelle Obama is from O Block. She from O Block. Right where Lil Dirk from. You tell me that she running around with $80 million worth of influence and she can't even fix her own neighborhood? And you think she gonna do something for your neighborhood? Oh you, go, oh, you think the one chance and the one shot that we did have with uh, Michelle Obama and, and Barack Obama, it, they couldn't get it done. So you think the great white knight is going to be able to get it done. So you think, uh, so a black man couldn't get done for black issues. So y'all think his white buddy is going to be able to get it done? I'm not seeing the connection here. I'm not seeing the connection. Come on now. We got to be a little smarter than this. And I'm, I, I imagine, wallahi, I'm not trying to be funny, but something ain't right here. Something ain't right. And, and I, I just can't go for it. I ain't never been no sucker. and never will be a sucker. I'll die. Uh, I'll die being sucker free. And they playing us like straight suckers, man. Just like Malcolm X said. You's a chump. Y'all celebrate Malcolm X here? No, y'all don't. Y'all gave Martin Luther King a, uh, and I'm gonna close out with that. Y'all gave Martin Luther King a day. Y'all don't get. Y'all didn't get a real leader, Malcolm X, a day. Y'all didn't give him a day. Y'all telling me, you know, uh, our ancestors died for this and, and died for us to vote and died for us to support the Democratic Party and blah blah woo de woo woo woo. Well, in case y'all didn't know, the Democratic Party was behind murdering the so-called two people who were supposed to have been helping us. Democrats was behind the murder of Kennedy, who was supposed to have helped us, and the Democrats was behind... Yeah, you see it, man? Yes, yeah, apples. You see them apple trees on them. <laughs> uh, uh, they was behind murdering Dr. King. And y'all, a lot of y'all don't know, the United States government was convicted of the conspiracy for murder for Martin Luther King. That was a democratic government who conspired. That's public record. Public records. Any of y'all can Google and look this up and find it. You need the information, I got it for you. They say, the legend has it. I put the post up today, ain't nobody touch it. 
Ain't nobody touch it. I put the post up today. I've been saving this one for about this time. When Martin Luther King, they say legend has it that three months before he died, three months before he died, he made a public statement with the Belafonte brother, made a public statement and said, I think I done led my people into a burning house. He talking about cutting that deal with them slave owners. And next thing you know, he turned up dead. And I keep telling y'all, look at his last speech. Look at his last speech. I, 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 I got the last speech. I will pay. I, I, get, I get some of y'all come. I pay y'all to look at it. I pay y'all to look at it. I got a few dollars. I pay y'all to look at this last speech, man. This was the one that got him killed. He turned on the United States government. It's on YouTube. But they want you to focus on, oh, I have a dream. Yeah, dreams aren't real. That was early in his career. Look at that last speech. He convicted the United States government. Excuse me. He indicted them. Once he seen that the deal that him and Kennedy made was starting to seem gloomy, he was like, you know what? These people grind me, man. I ain't, man, hold up. He went public with all the secrets that he knew. They recorded it. It's on YouTube. Look at it. He withdrew his support from the government. But y'all still doing it. Why? Because MSNBC told y'all to do it. Because Roland Martin told y'all to do it. Because D.L. Hughley told y'all to do it. Come on now. Y'all not even doing y'all own research. I ain't never let nobody play with my brain. Never. Never. That's the only reason why I'm saying all this stuff. If I wouldn't write an exact, if I wasn't situation, situated between right and exact, I wouldn't say nothing. I don't want to look like no fool, and none of y'all should want to look like no fool neither. But all of our black leaders, none of them supported the Democratic Party. None of them. And the, and the, and the black leader who we all should have got up under, y'all was just scared. The scared people shut out Malcolm X. Scared people did. Cause he won't compromise. He warned us. I put the video on my on my page. Nobody watched it. Nobody locked. No, nobody liked it. Nobody hearted it. Nobody shared it. He gave us the rundown. How did that man know? How did that man know? This is before Democrat blacks was Democrats and Republicans and all of this mess. That man warned us as soon as the 1964 Civil Act, Civil Rights Act passed. He warned us. He warned us. He said, do not fall for the whoop de -woo. And he broke down both parties. He said, the white liberal and the conservative liberal. Come on, y'all, go go check it out. Hell, the sister Nina Simone, she, she, she put a meme up. I took the meme off her page and put it on my page. Nobody liked it. Nobody hearted it. Nobody commented. None of that. Why are we so in love with being suckers? Why be so in love, like they say, ignorance is bliss? Yeah, the water, man. Why we so? Why we so scared? You dead already. You already ain't got nothing. You already poor. And as soon as you speak up, you already know the police gonna shoot you. So what? You, what, what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. But your house in Westchester, you gonna lose that? You ain't even got it. If you're afraid that you're gonna lose something, you don't have it. I ain't gonna get religious, religious on y'all. I'm gonna cut that out. <laughs> y'all report my report my page if I start getting religious. <laughs> but go and look at. I'm gonna close this up because I'm almost home. Go and look at uh, uh, Martin Luther King's last video where he withdrew his support of the United States government slash the Democratic Party. He was only working with the Democrats. He wasn't working with the Republicans. He was working with the Democrats. The people that was knocking him across his head. The people that had already attempted his life. The people who had already attempted his counterpart, Malcolm X. They tried, they, they tried to burn his house down with him and his family in it. Democrats. They weren't the Dixiecrats. They were the Democrats. And the people who we are up under the rule of now are the sons and daughters of those people. No, they're not the same people. Yes, there was the past. But it's the same exact, the same exactly predicament, the same exact predicament. 
the same exact predicament. So y'all do some more research. Look it up. I've been on here for I don't know how long, but uh, I don't see no I don't see nobody coming giving me no uh giving me no reasons why we supposed to be democratic. And I'm telling y'all now, whether Trump get in there and whether O Biden get in there, uh, ain't nothing gonna change. Hell, y'all the black Messiah Obama. He 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 came and passed twice, and still ain't nothing changed. We still having the same conversation. Same conversation. And don't come with that weak argument talking about, oh, they blocked everything that Obama tried to do. No, they didn't. Because I asked everybody, fair and square, what was it he was trying to do again? What did he say? Come on now. We fell for the whoop uh, the, the, uh, the whoop de whoop man. It's been eight, we, we had eight years of Obama, and we still talking about pr police brutality. Obama legislated that all the cops got to wear cameras. Alhamdulillah, he did that. And they still doing it. Ain't nothing changed. Ask yourself why it hasn't changed. And Albert Einstein, be quiet, you see? And Albert Einstein told, uh, uh, told you, if you study, Albert Einstein told you to, uh, to, to continue the same actions and expect different results is the definition of insanity. I didn't say that. Einstein said that. I think. <laughs> so yeah. I'm about to get out of here. Who's this Michael? Hey Mike, I ain't seen you in a long time, brother. Now that we begin to recreate Black Wall Street. Mm. You gotta you gotta fast forward this video. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do a video on that. That's the uh, my, uh, Michael uh, Michael Marino just gave y'all the juice. Uh, everybody on here, y'all Google Black Wall Street. Google that, cause that's where we going. That's where we going with it. And Black Wall Street, uh, they they were they were black. That was they were a community of black billionaires in the 50s, I believe. Mind you, your uh, your uh, your beloved Democrats literally bombed that place they literally bombed it a whole complete and total uh independent black community it was the the, 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 the net worth was in the billions they did it without uh biden they did it without uh obama they did it without all of these people we keep getting behind and right behind the only reason why i get down on get down on all that is because we lose on a lot of resources 90 percent of black people vote democratic we need y'all to come back home we need y'all to come back home that we we need that we will not survive without it 38 percent of the democratic party is black we need y'all to come back home to our own party to our own people that, 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 how could you be a part of something that you didn't start or you didn't create and you didn't have a hand in writing the rules in? How? How? How could you pledge your your life, your heart, your soul to something and you wasn't even there when they drew up the rules? You pledging to something that you didn't even have no no hand in building. And on top of that, it was built by your enemies. I'm not a can't beat them, join them guy. Ron, Ron Bracey will tell you that. <laughs> as many times as he beat me in basketball, I keep coming. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to beat you, good brother. <laughs> and I suggest that, uh, that, that, that we take on the same attitude. I'm not, don't, if, don't, don't take the mentality of you can't beat them, join them. That's some sucker stuff, man. You a sucker if you think that. And not no disrespect to nobody, but I'm saying, you know, that's a weak mentality. We need to fight. We need to stand up and we need to be independent. And that what you say, Mike said, uh, how do we buy up all of these Arab stores? <laughs> man, you should have been here earlier, Mark. We, uh, Mike, we could have got we could have went there, man. Uh, yeah, we got to do all of that. We got to do all of that. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm in the midst, I'm in the works of uh, drawing up uh, that type of plan. Um, so, uh, yeah, we got a plan. So for all the people who say, oh, what are you doing? We got we got a plan. We got we got it popping off. 
But we gotta re-educate y'all before we, you know, from the miseducation. <laughs> Little buddy, say what's up, Issa. Say slow nigga. Say hi. <laughs> All right, I'm gone, man. I'm hungry. I ain't eating nothing. Well, I did eat, but it wasn't much. I just got finished cutting eight acres this time for me to eat. Uh, not where that food at. <laughs> All right, I'm gone, y'all. Anything that I said uh, that was wrong did not belong to Allah, did not belong to the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wa salam, and does not belong to Islam, and definitely doesn't belong to our illustrious teachers. Uh, Might have been it's my mistake, my faultiness. That's it. So don't get over here talking about all oh, Muslims believe this. If it was wrong, <laughs> y'all be looking for any little thing. Uh oh, I'm gone. I gotta get out of here. I'm at my destination. Akuli kola hala wa sallallahu la ilaha illallah. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.